What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here. Today I wanna to talk to you about one of my favorite countries in Southeastern Europe, Bulgaria. If you guys don't know about Bulgaria, it's bordered by five countries, Romania, Serbia, North Macedonia, Greece, Turkey, and the Black Sea. Back in 2013, my wife Anna and I spent three incredible weeks doing a road trip around the country. We visited seven different cities we went through, Sofia, Veliko Tarnovo, Plovdiv, Stara Zagora, Burgas, Varna, and Ruse. It's a country that's full of warm-hearted people, delicious food, an inviting and immersive culture, and tons of history. In other words, a traveler's dream. During our trip, Anna and I entered Bulgaria by car from Edirne, Turkey. We spent the next 22 days exploring as much of the country as we could, from the gorgeous resort towns along the Black Sea coast to the charming cities and towns further inland and everything in between. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the top 15 places you must visit when you travel to Bulgaria. So before we start the video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to get updated when all the new videos drop. Now you guys ready? Let's dive into the top 15 places you must visit when you travel to Bulgaria. We're going to start in Bulgaria's capital and largest city, Sofia. This charming Balkan capital sits at the base of the Vito mountain roughly halfway between the Black Sea and the Adriatic Sea. It's the perfect city to begin your Bulgarian vacation and it's the city you'll most likely fly into. Sofia is an ancient city whose roots go back 30,000 years making it the second oldest capital in Europe. The Thracians themselves inhabited the city early in its history, but it was the Romans who boosted the city's importance before the Ottomans took over for several centuries. No visit to Sofia is complete without a stop at Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, a Neo-Byzantine cathedral that is one of the largest Eastern Orthodox churches on earth. I also suggest the National Archaeological Museum, where you'll find artifacts that span Bulgaria's long history from ancient Thrace all the way through the Middle Ages. The gold Thracian burial mask is easily one of the museum's highlights. If you're a history buff like me, you can't miss the underground ruins of the fortress of Serdica. During your stay in Sofia, carve out a day you can take a day trip to the next stop on our list, Rila Monastery. It's located on the Ryska River in the Rila Monastery Nature Park, about 73 miles south of Sofia. It's the largest Eastern Orthodox monastery in Bulgaria and dates back to the 10th century. In addition to being one of Bulgaria's most important historical and cultural sites, it's also an archaeological marvel and one of Southern Europe's top tourist attractions. Today the monastery is home to about 60 monks and is known for its colorful and oriented frescoes on its walls and ceilings. Rila Monastery was named the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. Next, we're headed to the city of Plovdiv, the second largest city in Bulgaria. It was once known as Philippopolis and named after Philip II of Macedon, who conquered the city in the 4th century BC. In the centuries that followed, Plovdiv exchanged hands between several invaders including the Persians, Greeks, Celts, Romans, Goths, Huns, Turks and the Crusaders. Today, Plovdiv is an essential transport cultural and economical center, but with so much history, it's a gold mine if you're digging into the past. One of the top sites in the city is a second century stadium built by Emperor Hadrian, which originally could host up to 30,000 spectators. The ruins of the ancient forum behind the post office on General Gurku Street are home to the Odeon, another ancient theater. Enjoy a stroll down a romantic cobblestone street of the old town, making sure to marvel at the Bulgarian National Revival architecture along its narrow lanes. Don't miss the more vibrant city center and main street, which is pedestrian friendly and lined with tons of restaurants, shops, and cafes. From Plovdiv, we're now making our way to the ancient Roman town of Hisaria, which is located near the edge of the Srendengora mountain range. It's close enough to Plovdiv that you can easily make it a day trip. At different points in its history, Hisaria went by the names of Hisar and Diklonopolis. It was built on top of a Thracian settlement that predated it and is home to some of the best preserved Roman gates and walls in Bulgaria. Let your inner archaeologist out as you explore the ruins where you'll find ancient streets, Roman baths, and even an amphitheater. And if history isn't really your thing, no problem. Hisaria is also home to several top-notch spa hotels where you can get pampered and enjoy the lap of luxury. From Hisaria, we're going to head over to Bulgaria's sixth largest city, Tarazagora. This picturesque city is known for its streets lined with linden trees and the impressive number of poets it has produced. The city's location made it one of the most popular crossroads of sorts throughout its history, as the Thracians, Romans, 
Ottomans, and Bulgarians all inhabited it at different times. Stara Zagora is surrounded by several prehistoric mounds. One of them, called Berateska, is the largest in Bulgaria. If you need more of a history fix, I suggest checking out the Neolithic Dwellings Museum, which is home to well-preserved lodgings from the Neolithic period, as well as several artifacts. You can find more Neolithic items at the Regional History Museum, along with an extensive Roman exhibit in its basement. Head over to the Roman Forum of Augusta Traiana to see the remains of the city walls, the Western Gate, and an amphitheater that is still used to this day for festivals, operas, and ballet performances. You can get in free, but you'll need permission from the Regional History Museum. Our next stop is Burgas, Bulgaria's fourth largest city. This city is one of the many charming locations along Bulgaria's Black Sea coast. It's not very big and easily can be explored on foot. It's also a great place to visit if you want to go somewhere that offers a good balance between history, shopping, and recreation. You'd be remiss if you didn't visit the Sea Garden, an 800 acre park that is home to unique plants from around the world. You'll also find a collection of sculptures called the Sculpture Garden. You can find artifacts from the Bronze and Stone Ages including Thracian, Greek, and Roman relics at the Archaeological Museum of Burgas. But the city's biggest draw is the annual sand festival on Burgas Beach, which takes place from July to September. There you'll find highly detailed sand sculptures that fit a certain theme, which changes every year. The sculptures are created by artists from around the world and are made from special, rain-resistant sand. When you're ready to eat some top-notch food, I recommend Ethnos Restaurant, which is known for its delicious grilled fish, meat, and semi-sweet local wine. If you want more traditional Bulgarian food, Try Vetonizata Restaurant, where I recommend the amazing pork satch, which is a mouth-watering mix of pork, eggplant, carrots, mushrooms, onions, lemon, tomatoes, and green peppers. While you're in Burgas, take a day trip 21 miles south to the ancient seaside town of Sozopol, which dates back to the 7th century BC. It has gone by at least a dozen names in its history, including Apollonia, Siziboli, and it became one of the largest Greek colonies on the Black Sea, as well as a wealthy trade and naval center. The remains of Apollonia can be found on St. Curic Island, just offshore. The remains of the old city walls can be seen all around the town. One of Sozopol's biggest draws is the annual Apollonia Art Festival, where you can enjoy everything from musical and dance performances to art exhibits to film showings. It's one of the best places to get a feel of Sozopol's rich history and cultural heritage. Another great day trip option from Burgas is the seaside resort town of Pomori, which began as part of Apollonia. It's located on a rocky peninsula roughly 12 miles outside of Burgas and is home to a sandy 5 kilometer long beach that is perfect for sailing, yachting and swimming. In addition to its beach, Bomori is known for its wine production, salt production, and mineral water. The mineral water and mud from Bomori Lake are thought to have healing properties, but the most famous attraction in Bomori is the Beehive Tomb, which was built either in the 2nd or 3rd century and served as a mausoleum for a wealthy family. It is also believed that pagan religious rituals were performed inside it. The tomb is well known for its round, brick and stone chamber, and semi-cylindrical arch. It's the perfect place for history or architecture buffs as it is the only tomb of its kind in Bulgaria. If you're a history enthusiast, hard to beat the next Bulgarian destination on our list, the coastal city of Varna. This ancient city's roots go back as far as 4600 BC, and remnants of the past can be seen practically everywhere, making it a living museum. The city blends its long history, ancient past with the modern, at Dormenshin of Mother of God Cathedral, which was built in 1886 but contains stones from Varna's original ancient walls. Other ancient sites include the 2nd century Varna Roman Baths, which are the largest preserved bathhouses in the Balkans, and the Varna Necropolis, where you'll find 300 graves that date back to the 4th century BC. The oldest gold treasure known to man, the gold of Varna, was discovered in the necropolis and moved to the Varna Archaeological Museum. In addition to the gold, you can also further explore Varna's history with relics from the city's time under Thracian, Greek, Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman rule. Outside of its historical significance, one of the great things about using Varna as a hub during your travels is that it's a fantastic city to base your day trips out of. One day trip you must take is to the resort town of Belchik, just 42 kilometers northeast of Varna. There you'll find Belchik Palace, also known as the Quietness Palace. This unique palace stands between the cliffs and the sea two kilometers south of Belchik and is made up of a complex of residential villas, botanical gardens, a wine cellar, a monastery, a chapel, and a holy spring. This makes it different from every other European palace, 
which usually only has one dominant building. One of the best things you could do there is walk around its grounds and enjoy the unparalleled views of the Black Sea. The second day trip from Varna I suggest is to Pliska, a small town that served as the capital of the first Bulgarian Empire from 681 to 893 AD. The city was once grand and quite beautiful as it covered over eight square miles and boasted earthen ramparts with stone walls and a number of palaces and other buildings of Bulgarian aristocrats. However, Pliska's existence coincided with a time of heavy warfare. During that time, the Byzantines burned Pliska to the ground, leaving only remains of the once impressive city. Even though it's only a shadow of its former self, you can see the remains of the royal palace, the basilica, and the remnants of the Pliska fortified walls. Our next Bulgarian destination is Ruse, the fifth largest city in the country. Ruse lies along the right bank of the Danube River, directly across from the Romanian city of Gurgiu making it a key river port. It's also a notable historical city that boasts over 300 buildings, including a number of Neo-Baroque and Neo-Rococo styles. For this reason, Rusa is sometimes referred to as Little Vienna. Beyond its historical buildings, I recommend seeing the Pantheon of National Revival Heroes, which serves as the final resting place of 39 notable Bulgarians. History lovers will also enjoy checking out the Regional Museum of History, which is home to 140,000 items, including many from the medieval period. Among its exhibits, you'll also find the Barovo Treasure, a cache of Thracian silver gilt items discovered in a field in 1974, and China from the 1970s century. Hands down, the best place to eat in Rusa is Mahana Chiflika, a traditional Bulgarian restaurant that offers tasty, hearty food, unique decor, and live music every night. A great day trip destination near Rusa are the rock churches of Ivanovo, a complex of medieval cave churches used between the 10th and 14th century. The cave walls are adorned with paintings of scenes from the Bible and the life of Jesus Christ. This site has so much significance to Bulgarian history and culture that it was named the UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979. The next city on our list is Veliko Tarnovo, a beautiful 5,000 year old city along the Yantra River. It served as the capital to the Second Bulgarian Empire and was home to many of the nobility. Veliko Tarnovo is one of Bulgaria's oldest cities. Although it doesn't have the beaches or high-end shopping of other Bulgarian cities, its charm and authenticity help it stand out on its own. It's a very walkable city which helps make it easy to get around. The city's most famous site and one of the most well-known in Bulgaria is the Zaravats Fortress, which stands on a hill of the same name. It was the second Bulgarian Empire's main fortress between 1185 and 1393, and it's surrounded by 3,000 feet of thick stone walls. Elsewhere, I recommend strolling the Old Town and checking out the Archaeological Museum, where you can find a gold treasure so ancient that it predates the Sirmian and Egyptian civilizations. One of the city's most recognizable landmarks is the Asenas Monument, which can be seen from most vantage points around the city and commemorates three Bulgarian Tsars for their contributions to Veliko Tarnovo. If you make time for day trips from Veliko Tarnovo, I recommend the early Byzantine city of Nicopolis ad Istrium which can be found just 20 kilometers from the city. The city was founded in the year 106 AD by Emperor Trajan. It was a beautifully planned Roman city and thrived until Attila the Hun's forces disseminated it in 447 AD. Even after its destruction, the meticulous planning behind Nicopolis ad Istrium is still evident today. The city is home to a network of ancient streets, a forum, public baths, and Odeon, public buildings, and an agora. Best of all, there are signs around the city that explain each structure, so you don't have to guess the purposes of the ruins you're exploring. Bulgaria is home to so many impressive historical and cultural sites that it's easy to forget that there are so many other things for travelers to explore. For a nice change of pace, I highly recommend checking out Marian Winery, one of Bulgaria's best boutique wineries. It's located in the village of Elena, close to the town of Marian, and opened its doors in 2010. Just two years after opening, was awarded the silver medal in the Balkans International Wine Competition for its sense of tears rosé. They only produce limited amounts of fantastic Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, rosé, and other blends. However, you can easily arrange a tasting by emailing the winery directly. Trust me, it's worth it. And there you have it. Those are the 15 places you must visit in Bulgaria. The three weeks I spent driving around the country were some of the most fascinating weeks of my life. Driving from city to city and exploring on foot really gave me a feeling of what Bulgaria is all about. And trust me, this list barely scratches the surface of everything you can do in Bulgaria. In order to experience Bulgaria properly, you'll have to drive around for months. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, the top 15 places you must visit in Bulgaria. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure somewhere around the world. Peace.